Hey Dave Lacalli with Head Games Motorworks. Today we are going to start development on the Audi B9 cylinder head. Check it out. So we've gotten some uh, interest on B9 Audis and I honestly didn't know what the hell they were. I had to go Google search it. I'm trying to figure out what, what do these heads come on. We had another customer brought some B8 heads and uh, I, I learned that this is a platform to actually make some jam. Sounds cool, really cool car. Now we're gonna get into the cylinder head. So we're gonna do our pocket port R and we are gonna flow test it before and after. You're gonna see the whole thing and uh, let's take a look at the ports. And the head's all clean. We, uh, I should say, let's take a look at the head because we're actually, uh, we're not getting to the ports yet. You can see there's two spark plugs per cylinder. It's gonna have a lifter and um, that's about it. I guess the camshaft must have, we didn't get the camshaft, but I'm gonna guess that it has a, like maybe a bridge that goes on top of this and the camshafts are held there. Nothing that we have to worry about. On this particular cylinder head, the guys machined it for DI and uh, port injection. So this is for the port injection and there's a hole that goes into the port here. Now, we did not do this. Now they asked us to do this and um, that's gonna come much later. We're gonna have to come up with a CNC program for that. This is just uh, drilled probably with a bridge port, I'm gonna say. Intake ports are gigantic. I do not really see any reason to make the port larger. Maybe the divider, maybe, but that is, uh, that's gonna be for much later. We will, we have an R&D head and we actually have a customer head and we're gonna try to see what we can come up with from the intake port alone. Now you see here, which is really cool, this is part of the runner. Uh, usually this would be in the intake manifold, but the intake manifolds actually into the cylinder head. It's casted into the cylinder head. So this area here, this whole cavity is made for putting a plenum on top of it. And then you have your stacks all into the port. On the other side of the port, the valve's pretty choked up here in the bowl area. So we're gonna make this an actual short side. We're gonna resize and reshape the bowl area in relation to the size of the valve. You can see right here, they kind of do that just a little bit underneath the valve. But what you really need to do is blend this all into here because this is already pretty big. And uh, we're gonna put some guides in it. And then, so we're gonna flow it like this, then we're gonna valve job it, then we're gonna flow it again. Only thing that does concern me about doing a valve job, you look at right here, here's the 45. And there's just a ledge here. I don't know what we can actually stick on it that's gonna flow better because the OEM just gave us no room to do anything. Uh, this is kind of amateur hour. Now, a lot of the guys always talk about five angle valve jobs. Now, a five angle valve job on this would just be a radius. And then on a lot of cylinder heads, it's a radius because the valve seat needs to be thick enough to put an actual five angles on it that would make sense. Most of the time, you're gonna do three to four angles. And actually, the three to four angles flow better than a five angle. I don't know where the five angle thing came uh, the, it's the holy grail, but uh, it won't be here. And now we can talk about the doo, doo exhaust. The exhaust is an integrated exhaust and they're, it's a small hole. Now we have tested this on the B58 Supra. We enlarged this area here. It's really easy to put a hole in it because there's obviously water around it. And also we just didn't see a gain from touching it. Now, uh, it basically is bell mouthing it. You would think that if you uh, did it, if it's only one exhaust port that you would have some kind of gain, but it just does not do anything. On the exhaust side, bowl area, you can see here, somewhat ported from the factory. All this needs to be blended in. I am going to expect less gains on the exhaust because they really just don't give us much to work with. And you have the same situation here again, the 45, and basically it's a throat cut. We're gonna measure this and see uh, how big they made it in relation to the size of the valve, but it, it, it just so, so tight. And last but not least for this video, we are going to blend the combustion chamber in. You can see here, the chamber is very deep into the valve 
all over here. It shrouds it all up. And we are going to blend all this in. And we're going to make this like a really nice, delicious looking combustion chamber. Now we're going to be splitting this, these videos up into a couple parts. I'm not sure exactly how many parts just yet, but be sure to like, subscribe, comment below and see what you want to see on the next video. And maybe we'll get it in there because we're going to be doing a lot of development and there's going to be some cool stuff. For tools, we got the trusty Makita GD0603 and the Head Games three quarter super spiral burr. And I cut it down, I made it short because we are gonna put some pressure on this guy. Now most of the videos you see, I remove the valve guides because I don't want them in my way of porting. On this one, I'm actually not gonna care because A, the guide's pretty far down. B, it's, uh, it, it is, bronze so I don't really care about hitting it with the burr and I really want to flow test it a bunch of times I'm not going to video all that but uh, and then the other reason why I'm going to use this size of a burr is because it is pretty close to the size of the bowl and I really need to make it a circle As you can see it's kind of squarish and I want to make it a circle and I don't want to have to try to shape the whole thing when you have a burr that is the shape, you can easily make it the shape. And this thing is also the honey badger of burrs. It's gonna take out material very, very quickly. Take a look at the short turn. You can see this huge ledge here. We are gonna make this a turn. Now I'm gonna do it with the three quarter that I was just using. I do not expect you guys to do that. If you decide to take this on yourself, I doubt you will, but uh, because you're gonna be able to ruin this very, very quickly if you did use it. If you are a beginner and not very good at porting, I would suggest going with the Head Games half inch burr on this steel because it's just going to be a lot easier to use. Now we're gonna go back over it with this right after I do the short turn. Right, guys check that out so if you compare this look a nice turn and I widen this up here widen on each corner and then you compare that to the OEM look at that dude this dude's all choked up let's look at the bull side side two completely opened up looks way better than the OEM look at this OEM is all choked up and uh, now you got something that looks uh, kind of delicious and now it's time to do the exhaust. So now we're going to use the Head Games half inch super spiral burr. We are going to blend it all in and then I'm going to hit it with the 3 8 uh, double cut burr to just make it nicey nice. Um, and then um, I'll take a look. Now you will notice that there is stock guides in it and they're steel on the exhaust. Um, now they're pretty far down so I'm not going to be concerned with hitting them. I don't think it's going to be anywhere near the way because they're flat and they're against the guide boss, but that's it. Now, I'm going to show you guys something that is unfortunate the way that the angle of the port comes in it's so the angle of this right here it's like almost impossible to not tag the valve seat when you're doing this now i'm not so concerned about it because we are likely going to uh, well we are going to valve job it and i'm not hitting the seat the other issue is well it's one angle so i'm not going to really care because i'm not wiping angles out
Difference here, much less dramatic than the intake side, but I also think the results are not gonna be as dramatic as the intake side. I bet the intake side porting alone is gonna be worth about 40 CFM, and I'm hoping for maybe 10 or 15, so like half from the exhaust. Now we're talking about gains. I think it's gonna gain everywhere. It's gonna gain from the crack of the valve all the way throughout the range. And just because you don't see a huge gain doesn't mean that it's not worth something on the car. So the flow bench and the car can be two totally different things. The other problem I have is uh, I'm so used to relying on the valve job being the, um, man, just the, the wow factor of it. And I just don't think that the OEM gave us anything to go off of to be able to do the wow factor. But um, let me show you the chamber. Now to do the combustion chamber, we need to put in these valves. You can see that the top of the valve, the margin is razor sharp. You can actually cut yourself on this. Yes, these are just tools. I know people are always like, oh, you're gonna reuse that valve. Yeah, we're gonna reuse it with all the tape on it and everything else. No, this is just a valve that I have that's gonna be able to fit in here. And it's going to cover the valve seat. So that way when we are porting, it doesn't hit the seat and we're just protecting it. And it's also gonna blend everything into the top cut of the valve job. On the combustion chamber shaping, you're gonna see me uh, do it in a uh, maybe not traditional factor. So uh, obviously these are educational videos for you guys. I've been doing this for close to 30 years. So I'm gonna be able to freehand this. I'm gonna see the shape and then I'm gonna transcribe it to the other ones because I, well, I know what I'm doing, but if you guys have not done this before, uh, I suggest that you blew the head up, which means use some dicum and either use a valve or you can get these radiuses so that way you are sure that you're doing it the same to every one of them. Now I will say if the shape is not there, the size is not there. And a lot of people think that you have to be like just dead on there. And the reality is that the OEMs are not dead on there. Each chamber is a little bit different than the other. So um, it really doesn't matter that much because, uh, well, it just, it, it doesn't. But it, it should be, as I said, if the shape's there, the size should be there and you're golden. Now I'm gonna switch it over to the Head Games Deburber, and I'm gonna use my Clico grinder. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get into all the hard spots that the half inch burr just won't fit into. As you can see, now I just made this shape. It's basically just being able to fit the half inch into here. And now I'm gonna get into these tight spots and then we're gonna go back over to three eighths and then we're gonna sand it. Now we're gonna sand. We're gonna start off with a 60 grit. I'll put a link to this uh, on the bottom. It's an inch and a half long. It is eighth inch thread and it is uh, 60 grit. So I would not start off with doing anything less than 60 grit. We're only gonna go up to 120 um, and then we're gonna hit it with this uh, 3M tool. Now you see on other videos, unless you're new here, I modify this 3M tool so that way 
the disc is malleable. And what that's gonna do is gonna get rid of any bumps and any high spots. We're gonna be able to make it nicey nice. And then I'm gonna hit it with 120 grit. And once I hit it with 120 grit, I'm gonna get it with some scotch bright. This is a handmade tool. And we just hit it with some scotch bright to make it look pretty. here is the finished product now yes it could be sanded a little bit more and i just wanted to get it done for the video and flow testing and it might change anyway so look at this nice deal here now what i did was i just made the half inch fit both sides you can see it's even and uh, you didn't really have to do anything to the exhaust side and i blended all the corners in here and now we uh, will check it out this is what it looks like from the factory See, this is really, really bad. Now, this is gonna add a lot of flow. I would not do this. I would not, I would not do this unless you are doing a port injection because this is all for DI. And now if you're doing port and DI, you don't really need to have both, but this is gonna really, really, really help flow. Let's take, open all this up. And now it's off to the flow bench. This ends our part one. If you want to see the flow results, be sure to check out episode two in the next coming weeks. Like, subscribe, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And make sure you press that notification button so you can see what this thing flows. Toodles.